Hi, Fet Lovers. Thank you for joining Gina's Grooming Channel. I am super excited today because we are going to have a little bit of a science experiment. Uh, not too, too complex, so don't run away. It's not only fun and easy, um, but it's also going to lead to the making of an incredibly powerful antimicrobial disinfectant, okay, that is safe to use around humans and pets. Sound interesting? Let's introduce you to hypochlorous acid. Now, guys, I discovered hypochlorous acid uh, when doing a lecture uh, from a company called HICC Pet that had um, gloves for pets made with hypochlorous acid. And that's when I started learning about this incredibly powerful antimicrobial disinfectant. Um, guys, I'm going to put some charts up uh, so you can see how effective it is. Um, you can see in terms of killing a pathogen like E. coli uh, in a comparison with bleach. Um, okay, hypochlorous acid is much more effective and much more fast at killing these pathogens, are much more effective at killing COVID-19, salmonella, norovirus, so avian bronchitis, the list goes on and on. So I'm gonna be um, basically giving you guys links in the description below the video. So if you wanna geek out like me and see all of the studies done about the benefits of hypochlorous acid, um, that is available to you. Now, the big question is why are we making it the thing about hypochlorous acid um, after we make it is it doesn't have a very long shelf life. So it's not very marketable. Um, now there are ways that some manufacturers have found to harness it and uh, include it in the ingredients, but to make um, hypochlorous acid in its free form, in its pure form, we have to do this little science experiment again, not a difficult one, using pretty much very common household items and that will allow us to have hypochlorous acid so that we can disinfect surfaces in a great area. We can disinfect, and I'm not kidding you, our fruits and vegetables. We can disinfect not only our pet toys, but also the toys of our children. Hypochlorous acid is used in the food services uh, industry. It's also used in hospitals. It's used in wound care because hypochlorous acid exists in our bodies naturally as part of our natural immune system. And that's what makes it incredibly safe to use while remaining incredibly, incredibly effective and powerful. Okay, guys, so what do we need to make hypochlorous acid? Uh, we need just really basically two ingredients, which is water and salt. But we need to extract the hypochlorous acid element out of the salt in an aqueous solution, which is the water. And in order to do that, we need to add electricity. So I bought a travel electrolysis machine. Uh, just so you guys know from the same company that makes this machine, the travel machine, you can also buy pitchers uh, that you put in salt and water and push a button and you've got hypochlorous acid for some time, uh, typically about two weeks to about a month. Now I do want to add um, the inclusion of vinegar and this, we're gonna take a quick second to talk about pH and what that means. So guys, I'm gonna put a chart up above me so you can see um, what pH is. It is the pH scale um, and that is going to be measuring how acidic or how alkaline um, a substance is. So you can see on the most acidic, we have our battery, right? That's battery acid. And our most alkaline is we have very severely drain cleaner, but somewhere in the middle. Okay. So seven is our neutral pH. Um, that is where we have our water. Um, now what we want to do is we want to extract hypochlorous acid okay, from a salt and water mixture. Um, but now with the addition of vinegar, we can take that scale and make it slightly more acidic, which will get us closer. And we're gonna put up a chart here of where hypochlorous acid lives. Okay, so on the scale, the pH scale of one to 10, um, it actually goes up to 14, but you can see that hypochlorous acid lives in pretty much that scale between three to seven with it really, really being strong in the solution at a five, pH. So that's slightly more acidic than water. So there's a little bit of a trick to be able to add vinegar to your solution of salt and water, push that scale back a little bit so that when we push electricity through our solution, we're going to end up much more with a five. And we're going to test our pH. We have some pH testing strips here. 
Um, and we're also going to be testing the chlorine because hypochlorous acid is chlorine, but think of it as safe chlorine. Okay, if we go all the way to the spectrum, right, of pH and we make a very alkaline um, uh, solution, we are going toward sodium hypochlorite. And hypochlorite is the OCL that you see um, a little later in the alkaline part of your scale. And that's where you're going to see. So sodium hypochlorite is bleach. But like we discussed in the beginning, hypochlorous acid is actually more effective at killing pathogens than hypochlorite. So sodium hypochlorite bleach. So we want to be ending up right there at that five zone. So let's keep that in mind and let's get our hands in and start doing this. Okay, guys, starting off with water. We've got water and we have got a little beaker here um, that we're going to do some measurements with. Um, the, what is recommended for us to make our hypochlorous acid solution to fill up to 10 ounces, that's about 300 milliliters of water. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, whether or not this water is filtered, I definitely like to use filtered water, but you can make hypochlorous acid um, just using your tap water. Okay, and then with our little machine, our little electronic machine that's going to give us an electrical charge through our solution, they actually provided a little scoop for your salt. So in the solution, I'm going to be putting one little scoop of salt. Okay, let's mix that up. That really nice. I like to use uh, fine salt. And I'm using kosher fine salt, getting that nice and mixed so you guys can see. Okay, now that I've got my salt and water solution, let's do a quick little test. Let's go to our pH. Okay, so this is our salt and water solution. I'm going to pour just a little bit in here so we can test out what it looks like with our strips here for our acid. So our acid strips will tell us exactly where we are on the acid scale. Okay, and this is how we test out how things, how acidic things there are. So you can see we are super neutral here. We're at a six. Okay, so this is going to be just water and salt solution. Okay, so we've, I'm going to put the strips in front of these guys so you can kind of see how things change as we go along. Okay, so now I've got some vinegar. Let's take a look at this vinegar with our pH strips. Okay, so I'm gonna just take a little strip off and dip it into my white wine vinegar. This is white vinegar distilled 5%. Okay, nice and red. And if we look at that scale that we have, okay, you guys can compare it here. We're at a nice two, that means it's pretty acidic. So we are gonna add just a little bit. Okay, we're gonna add one milliliter of white vinegar to our solution here. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay, a little bit less. Let's get that perfect amount. Guys, if it's not perfect, perfect, it's really not gonna hurt too much, but at least this way, if you're using constant measurements, you know what you're getting. There's my vinegar that I'm adding to the solution. Let's stir this guy around. And here's where I'm gonna start adding an electrical charge. So I'm gonna be using this device, plug it in to my USB, and I am just going to be placing it into my beaker here, into my jar. And if you can take a look, you can see the reaction is happening right away. So we are having a change in our solution, a molecular change due to adding an electrical charge to our water. So we're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes and I'll see you guys back here in 10. Okay, guys, 10 minutes is up. Let's see what we've got brewing in our cauldron here. All we have to do, we can unplug this guy. Um, 
The important thing to know is that because this is uh, in salt water and we're using salt water, is that the company recommends that you wash your unit out um, with water after every single use. So we're gonna do that after we're done here. Okay, so we have got, if we did everything right, hypochlorous acid, which is good chlorine, incredibly effective and safe to use around pets and humans, also uh, for wound care, uh, for antifungal properties, the list goes on and on. Before I started filming today, I made a batch of the same way with 10 minutes, but I didn't use vinegar um, and I put it into this little jar. Now this is going to be our hypochlorous acid, the HOCl. Um, this is with the vinegar. This is with our vinegar mixture. So we're gonna take out our pH strips. I'm gonna lay them out in front of you guys so you can see the difference between these two mixtures and why it's important uh, and helpful to use vinegar um, when doing this. So here's my pH strip. Let's take a look first and see how we look without using the vinegar. So this is only salt and water. Okay, so that is that green color. We are looking at a pretty solid seven, a very neutral color, very similar uh, to what we see with just salt water, right? So neutral pH. Um, so that's in that seven range. Let's bring up that chart again. Remember, the five is really our sweet spot um, for hypochlorous acid. We do have hypochlorous acid in the sevens, but that's when it starts degrading and moving toward more of the hypochlorite uh, compound. So we don't want that. That's not as effective. So let's see if we did better by adding that one milliliter of white vinegar. But here's the moment of truth. You guys are testing this with me as I go. Okay, perfect. I'm going to lay that right there. Guys, take a look at that. That is a beautiful color, much more leaning toward a five. So we've got that pretty much spot on. Okay, so now the big question is, okay, so we know that we've got the right pH, um, but how do we know that we have something that has good chlorine or free chlorine? That's where our chlorine testing strips come in. Um, so I want to kind of show you guys this. Uh, this is how we know if chlorine exists in something. So let's first test out um, our wa salt water, okay? See if there's any chlorine in that. What we're looking for is darkness. You can see in our salt water, there is no chlorine. I'm going to put the strip right next to it. Stayed nice and light. Um, okay, now let's take a look at if we have our chlorine in our hypochlorous acid solution. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's how you know. You've got a neutral pH, right? That's a five. And you've got a high chlorine count. So this is hypochlorous acid. This is exactly what we wanted, guys. So let me talk about how I store it and how I use it. Um, I bought little bottles. I made this hypochlorous acid solution, safe for humans, um, about three weeks ago. And I tested it. Let's test it today. I tested it a few days ago to make sure that it was still in the range. Um, again, there is a shelf life to this and that's why you wanna make it at home. So let's test out the one that I did. I'm gonna do this guy. Okay, nice neutral, that's a nice five. A little bit more acidic than neutral. Okay, this is gonna be this guy. And then let's see if we still have any chlorine left. And I can see as I'm picking up the strip that it definitely contains chlorine still. Okay, guys, we are, as mentioned, high chlorine content, um, neutral to slightly acidic pH with our strip. So this is three weeks of storing it, but there are some important things about storing your hypochlorous acid. A very important thing is to make sure that you buy a bottle that is not going to allow light to come through. Um, so I bought two of these bottles. Um, the other important thing is to make sure that you label your bottle. What I like to do with hypochlorous acid is write the date uh, which I made it so I can kind of see um, how it's doing. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed our journey uh, to learn about hypochlorous acid, H-O-C-L. Um, I really encourage you guys to really delve into it because I did on my journey as a professional pet groomer and now have found this benefit amazing, not only as a disinfectant, but also as a wound cleanser, um, as an antifungal. So the reasons for using hypochlorous acid and making it at home and having it in a type of a means where you can aerosolize it, right, 
incredibly, incredibly beneficial and wonderfully safe. Guys, of course, I'm going to put down all of the stuff that you need for it, but it's not that much, uh, not that expensive. And if you really think about making a disinfectant at home uh, for a very small initial investment, uh, this is a really great way to go. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to put them down below. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for that thumbs up. Thank you for subscribing if you have not done so already. I really appreciate your time. I'll see you soon.